The Energy Outlook looks at the key forces and trends shaping global energy markets out to 2040. Now, the key point here is the value of the outlook is not in trying to predict the future, but to better understand the uncertainty we face. Which factors make a huge difference? Which factors make far less? So the value for anyone involved in the global energy system is better understanding the nature of that uncertainty so they can ensure that their businesses are robust and strong, however global our energy markets evolve over the next 20 years. The biggest theme that comes out of this year's energy outlook is the dual challenge, the need for more energy and less carbon. This year's Energy Outlook spends quite a bit of time looking at the relationship between human development and energy consumption in some of the poorest countries in the world, emphasising the need for more energy. But at the same time, it highlights that the path we appear to be on at the moment isn't consistent with meeting the Paris climate goals and the need for carbon emissions to fall. Solving that dual challenge, more energy, less carbon, is the biggest challenge facing global energy system over the next 20 years. All of the growth in energy demand is likely to come from the developing world. We expect something like two and a half billion people, that's a third of the world's population today, to move from low incomes to middle incomes over the next 20 years. It's that growing middle class, particularly in developing Asia, which drives the growth in energy demand over the next 20 years. One of the changes in this year's energy outlook relative to past outlooks is that India, rather than China, is expected to be the fastest growing source of energy over the next 20 years. As the overall economic growth of China slows and the pattern of that growth shifts towards less energy intensive sectors. Almost all fuels need to grow over the next 20 years to meet the growth of energy demand. In the evolving transition scenario, the fastest growing source of energy is renewable energy, led by wind and solar, which accounts for around half of the increase in primary energy. Natural gas is also expected to grow strongly, accounting for around a third of the growth in primary energy. So together, renewables and natural gas accounting for around 85% of the increase in primary energy over the next 20 years. In the evolving transition scenario, oil demand grows for the next 10 years or so before broadly plateauing in the 2030s. That growth in oil demand coming from increasing demand for oil and other liquid fuels as a feedstock, particularly into the petrochemical sector, and also from transportation. It requires literally trillions of dollars of investment to be able to supply that quantity of oil out to 2040. The fact that the world would need to invest heavily in oil, almost irrespective of how the global energy system evolves over the next 20 years, is something which I don't think is well understood today. The demand for natural gas is growing in almost every region and country that we consider. The growth of that natural gas supported by growing use both within the power sector and also within industry. A key factor supporting this growth is the increasing expansion of liquefied natural gas, LNG, which is increasing the accessibility of natural gas around the globe. In the evolving transition scenario, renewable energy led by wind and solar is the fastest growing source of energy. It accounts for around half of the increase in primary energy and around two thirds of the increase in power generation. As a result, renewable energy overtakes coal to be the largest source of power generation by 2040. This strong growth in renewable energy is helped and supported by both government policies in some parts of the world, but more importantly, increasing technological gains, driving cost reductions in wind and solar power. Renewables are likely to become an ever-increasing part of the global energy system. The point of the Energy Outlook is not to try to predict the future, but to better understand the uncertainty we face. We do that by exploring a whole series of what-if questions. How would the global energy system change or be different if different parts of policy, preferences or technology evolves in different ways? 
In the energy outlook, we consider an alternative scenario, a less globalisation scenario, in which the recent trade disputes escalate, and as a result of which they slow global GDP growth because there's less trade, and they also cause countries to become more concerned about imported energy because of the security risk, and so prefer to use domestically produced energy. What I found most striking was that relatively modest assumptions led to really quite significant impacts on the global energy system. The big losers here are the major energy exporters as the demand for traded fuels slows. There are growing environmental concerns about the use of plastics. In the energy outlook, we consider an alternative scenario culminating in a worldwide ban on the use of plastics for packaging and other single uses. This reduces the growth of oil demand by around a half. So oil demand continues to grow over the next 20 years, but less significantly. One other feature that we stressed in this scenario is that the reason why plastics grow very significantly over the next 20 years is because they work. They're an efficient solution to many everyday needs. And so if the regulation of plastics tighten, we also need to think about what materials will be used in their place and what impact that will have both on energy demand and also the wider environment. In the energy outlook, we develop a new rapid transition scenario in which carbon emissions fall by around 45% by 2040, consistent with meeting the Paris Climate Goals. That rapid transition scenario is built up by a whole range of policy measures in the power sector, within buildings and industry, and also the transport sector. What is striking, despite applying a whole range of policy measures to the transportation sector, including a very significant increase in the electrification of both cars and trucks, the reduction in carbon emissions is really quite small. Around two thirds of the reduction in carbon emissions comes from the power sector. The power sector is key to assuring a rapid transition to a lower carbon energy system over the next 20 years. Looking beyond 2040, a whole range of technologies will need to play a role if carbon emissions are, are going to fall to net zero by the second half of the century. A decarbonised power sector, supported by greater use of hydrogen and also bioenergy, particularly in transport and industry, circular economy, improving energy efficiency, carbon capture, use and storage, CCUS, and negative emissions technologies, storing and removing carbon emissions. This year's Energy Outlook contains a huge amount of analysis and insights. Go online, have a look, and then let us know what you think. Help us improve our analysis of how global energy markets are likely to evolve over the next 20 years. <laughs>